What's up, ladies and gentlemen, geeks and gamers? I am Sebastian Kobo, coming at you with more StarCraft flavored awesomeness. Bring the noise! This broadcast is brought to you by Split Reason. Putting Geeky back into sexy since before Web 2.0. Check it out, people! Hello there. Hope you liked my empathic ghetto greeting just before. This is the uh, PolygonReview.com StarCraft 2 broadcast number 11. And today we've got some exciting things happening. First of all, we're going to talk to a true StarCraft 2 architect. He's called Anaris. Uh, you will already know him uh, by his work. Because you have either played Infernal Arena, which is very, very popular all over the place right now. And if you haven't done that, you will most probably have watched, just like 200,000 plus other gamers, Husky StarCraft's promotion video of that very exciting map. You will learn all about it in this interview and more for sure, as Anaris is a very creative map maker and he will talk from a map maker's point of view about the potential that lies within StarCraft 2 and its god powers when it comes to gaming architecture. However, there's more uh, I'd like to announce. The clue is in the title, really, because I will reveal why I haven't been broadcasting as much as I would have liked and promised, and why that will change for the better. We will go places, and uh, why this show and uh, the content coming out of this channel uh, will increase, multiply and improve immensely. I'm going to Shanghai in less than two weeks, moving to China for approximately a long time is the idea and it's not an esports related job but I will be working there and uh, I do believe and I do intend for it to go very very well hand in hand with my esports commitment and passion for all things StarCraft. I can't uh, reveal much more than that right now, but obviously, as everybody know who uh, have used Google Maps once or twice, Shanghai is very close to South Korea indeed. Yes, uh, exciting times, exciting opportunities. I will be uh, bringing coverage uh, of the Eastern Front uh, from the Asian service, from the whole gaming culture that exists over there. Uh, for the global audience, the English-speaking audience. And I can also promise you that as soon as I got and settled down over there and uh, got my shit together, I will not only be continuing to do these interviews, which I know many of you like, but also 40 minutes of talking can be a bit dense. I, I would agree to that. So I'm going to introduce a new uh, type of content. It will be a bit sexier, a bit more bite-sized. Not sexier in the strict sense of the word, but awesome nevertheless. I can't wait to show you what I mean, but um, stay tuned and do stay subscribed because uh, exciting things are coming out of this place. Now, enough of that. We are going to talk to Anaris, the StarCraft architect himself and real life buddy of uh, Husky StarCraft. Let's give it up for the man, the architect, the map maker. <laughs> Hello and welcome nerds to the 11th StarCraft 2 broadcast from PolygonReview.com. I am Sebastian Koberg. Today I've got a guest from Oregon who's not husky but who's a man to be reckoned with regardless. Hello Anaris, how are we doing today? Pretty good Sebastian, how are you doing? Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, it's uh, getting autumny in Sweden, but I kind of like that. It lends itself to uh, nerd activity in a way that uh, seems less um, hostile to non-geeks. I like it. What about yourself? <laughs> um, you know, it's great over here right now. It's kind of rainy, and uh, like you said, this weather definitely lends itself to the uh, to the geek climate, kind of offsetting the heat from the computers in the room. So, yeah, definitely good times there. I think we have an understanding uh, which will be shared by many viewers of this episode for sure. But even during the uh, summer heat, which in Sweden was uh, was bad, man, uh, we lost some good people out there. Uh, you managed to put up some very inspiring content because, of course, as uh, many people will know, there's a very popular 
free versus free map out there on uh, Battle.net right now called Infernal Arena. If they didn't find it there on the official portal, they found it through a video of Huskies, which has been watched well over 200,000 times. And uh, you made it. Uh, Husky had some creative input, I believe. Uh, could you tell us a bit more how this project came around and uh, where it has led? Yeah, sure. Um, Husky and I were just talking online one night and filling ideas back and forth about uh, about maps and stuff. And basically, I just told him, you know, hey, I got a lot of free time in my hands. I'm kind of looking to mess around with this map editor a little bit. And he uh, he told me that he had this idea for kind of an isolated one versus one, uh, three versus three map. And we kind of went over some generalities regarding the issue, and uh, he basically just said, you know, here's the idea, go with it. And so I started making uh, started making a map, just kind of tossing tossing ideas out, not even really writing them down or drawing them like I usually do for maps in the planning stage. I just uh, doodled in the map editor, and lo and behold, a couple hours later, I had uh, what is now the left leftmost island. I sent it to him, and he was uh, pretty impressed by it, so I made the made the middle island and I copied the left one over to the right and went from there. He kind of provided a, he kind of provided creative input along the way and made some balance suggestions and whatnot. And yeah, it was, it was a, it was a fun cooperative experience. And it is a fun thing to play, even though I personally have only uh, touched upon it uh, briefly. It, uh, it is a very interesting, interesting uh, concept of a traditional Starcraft two multiplayer being played less traditionally. Uh, of course, people who are watching this can right now see the video I mentioned in the background. Uh, and it's it's lava, there's free lanes, it's uh, f f free versus free, but also free one versus ones. Uh, can you expand a little upon the concept behind it? Uh, yeah, sure. Like you said, it's basically you've got two teams. Um, the three people on your team will spawn at either the top or the bottom, so you won't have two people up and one person down. And uh, you're in you're in kind of a lane with your opponent, and there are several strategic options which you can take to comp conquer your opponent. But you know, there's also the other uh, other opposing teammates you have to worry about. You're always kind of out of your element, so to speak, on this map because the other teammates and on the opposing team seem like they're out of reach, but you never know when they're all going to gang up on one person or, you know, if your team decides to gang up on one person and they decide to attack you, well, it's really hard to react quickly on that map because there's just so, it's just such a big map. And uh, we did that on purpose because we really wanted to uh, stress the importance of decision making both on an individual and a team level uh, in this map. So I really think that it lends itself well to you know teaching people how to deal with stuff outside of their element and making sound decisions and whatnot in the in the game. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's quite a fun sort of gladiator style of playing StarCraft multiplayer. I found, and uh, it also lends itself to. People have yet to climb the learning curve. Uh, uh, whilst it still has high level capacity, I found uh, it's a very interesting way of playing, and uh, I think it could lend itself well to show matches on events, uh, perhaps uh, something to get the juices flowing in a less serious yet entertaining way. Uh, at least that's that's how I could see it develop in some shape or form. Uh, it's an interesting way of playing StarCraft multiplayer, and of course there will be links down there in the information box and everything uh, but this is not the only thing you got under your belt you have a well subscribed almost 10,000 uh, subscribers uh, on your YouTube channel and putting up lots of content both map making related and uh, traditional commentary well, what motivates you and uh, what are your plans 